Well, certainly you can be stopped. I mean, I'm dealing with very talented people. They're politicians. They're senators. And I guess, do we have any governors left? I don't know. Let's see. I don't think so. But we have a lot of talented people. And uh, we'll see what happens. But certainly nobody's unstoppable. Your campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, said that you have not gotten the credit you deserve from the party for leading the race. Why do you think that is? Do you think some Republicans still don't take you seriously? Well, I'm an outsider, and you know, which I'm proud to be, but don't forget, I was a member of the establishment totally. I was a big campaign contributor. I gave lots of money to everybody. I mean, I'd give money to everybody, and I was uh, a very big donor to the Republicans. I used to be a donor to everybody, frankly, because as a businessman, that was a good thing to do. But um, yeah, the day I decided to run, which was June 16th, I became an outsider. And all of the establishment sort of said, well, wait a minute, what happened to him? He's not supposed to be doing that. That's not in the cards. And I don't want money. I, you know, I'm self-funding my campaign, so I don't need donor money and, and lobbyist money and special interest money. And that bothers them because the special interests want to control their candidates, and I can't be controlled. I'm going to do what's good for the people and for what's good for the country. I mean, this is a great opportunity. Uh, the drug companies control the drug industry. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and the military companies, you know, everybody controls everything. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to be fair to everybody, but I'm going to do what's right. And that's why we have the big deficits we have. That's why we make the bad trade deals, because all of these politicians are controlled by lobbyists and donors, etc. Last week, Senator Rubio said he didn't think a brokered convention would necessarily be a bad thing. Are you concerned at all that party leaders might try to block your nomination at the convention? I don't think we're going to have a convention, a brokered convention. I think it's unlikely. I think, I think I'm doing better than that. And so far, you know, I'm really on my way. I thought I actually won Iowa, if you look at it really closely. But even if I didn't, I just got one delegate less because I, I you know, came in a very, very close second. So I have a second and I have two firsts. And New Hampshire was a blowout and this one was a blowout. And, you know, I don't think, I don't see where there's a, a convention. And I think most of the smart people are saying there's not going to be a convention. Uh, interestingly, the ones that say that they're going to be a convention, usually they're the pundits that have been wrong forever. The ones that have been wrong about me. Not you, because you've been right about me, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Senator Cruz says that you attack him every day because you know he's the only one who can beat you. Is that right? No, it's not right, but he's very talented, and uh, certainly he could beat me, and so could Marco, and so could the others that are running. I mean, you know, crazy things happen in the world of politics. Governor Jeb Bush dropped out last night. He was once the front runner, once expected to win the nomination. Many would point to you as the primary reason his campaign sputtered. Do you think by labeling him low energy and, and targeting him so quickly, do you think that's what did him in? I just don't know what did him in. I, I can tell you I like him. He's a good person. He's a good man. But, you know, he really hit me with a lot of commercials. He's, he was spending $25 million on commercials on me. And I said, wow, that's another commercial. That one's really bad and not true, although some was true. I mean, I will tell some was true, but a lot of it wasn't true. And I said, wow, that's a big commercial. And then it just kept going on and on and on. And I said, who's doing that? And it was Jeb. And then there'd be a new one, and it was Jeb. And then a new one, and it was Jeb. So... And then, you know, uh, a couple of, we had a couple of robocalls the morning, yesterday morning, and the morning of the election, and they were brutal, and that was done by Ted Cruz. We had two really brutal robocalls, and one on the flag and uh, one on uh, gay rights. And I want to tell you, they were tough, tough, tough. So, you know, this is a tough business, I'll tell you. I think real estate in Manhattan is a lot easier. You also took on Jeb's brother, President George W. Bush, in South Carolina, a state that he won in 2000, uh, and then you won it handily, even though you took on George W. Bush. Do you see Jeb's loss and your victory in South Carolina as a vote on the entire Bush legacy, in a way? I hope not, because it shouldn't be. I, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, Jeb fought very hard. It wasn't his time. That's all. He's a very capable person. It just wasn't his time. And, uh, you know, I know the family. My son knows his son, and my son Eric knows uh, Jeb's son, and he says he's an incredible young man. Uh, and, you know, it, 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 actually, it was really just not his time. It was really, you know, four years ago, I think he would have won. Uh, although it would have been, you know, with Mitt and him, it would have been a good contest. But, but this was not really his time. 
There's a lot of concern, uh, as you know, among Republican Party leaders in Washington about can you win a general election. Let's talk about demographics for a second. If the next Republican nominee wins the same share of the white vote that Mitt Romney did in 2012, that was 59 percent, that nominee would need to win 30 percent of the non-white vote. Now, with all due respect, sir, a lot of Republican leaders in D.C. struggle to envision you accomplishing this, especially given the fact that there are white supremacist groups and individuals like that who support you, some of whom you've even retweeted. Well, that I know nothing about. I mean, I don't know about retweeting. I mean, you, you retweet somebody and it turns out to be a white supremacist. I know nothing about these groups that are supporting me. I will tell you this. As a candidate, I will bring over many, many Dems. We're going to bring over a lot of Democrats. We're going to bring over a lot of independents. Nobody else will. In all fairness, the other candidates, they will never bring over independents. They will never bring We're talking about the Reagan Democrats. We're going to bring over tremendous numbers. We're going to bring over youth. Bernie's not going to make it, in my opinion, and I never thought he would. Uh, Hillary won't make it. You know, I mean, frankly, if she gets indicted, that's the only way she's going to be stopped. And I think it's going to be between Hillary and myself. They say that it'll be the largest voter turnout in the history of United States elections. And I want to say that's a great compliment to the country because we have such a low voter turnout compared to a lot of other countries. So I think it'll be the greatest voter turnout in history. I mean, stories, if it's, you know, Hillary against me, that's going to be a tremendous turnout. I'm going to win. I'm going to win places like Michigan that the Republicans can't even think of. You know, they always talk about the six states, right, with Ohio and Pennsylvania and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go through the numbers. But I will win places like Michigan that people don't even talk about. I will have a chance of winning New York. If I win New York, the election's over, okay, from an electoral college standpoint. I have a chance of winning New York. I'll win states that aren't in play. I'll win states that the Republicans don't even think of. And one of them that comes to mind is Michigan, and another one is New York. Upstate New York, I'm like the most popular person that's ever lived virtually, upstate New York. Uh, they're, they're great friends of mine, and we will do very well in New York. I don't know, maybe win it, maybe not, but we're going to do very, we're going to come awfully close to winning it, and I think I have a great chance. The other thing is African-American voters. I think I'm going to get a tremendous amount. And you're seeing the stories where African-American leaders are saying, you know, my people really like Trump. Because I'm going to bring jobs back from China and Mexico and Japan and Vietnam and India and all these places that are taking our jobs. I'm going to bring jobs back. And a recent poll came out where I had 25 percent African-American, and the Republicans usually get about 4 or 5 percent. And one of the hosts said, if you ever get 25 percent, this election's over. You might as well not run it. I'm going to do great with the African-Americans. African-American youth is 58 percent unemployed. African Americans in their prime are substantially worse off, you know, economically than a than the whites in their prime. And it's very, you know, it's a very sad situation. I'm going to do great with African Americans. You watch. And I'm going to do great with Hispanics. I employ thousands of Hispanics. I'm going to do great with Hispanics. I want to get some clarification on comments you made this week at uh, the CNN Town Hall about Obamacare. Take a listen. Why would insurance company uh, not have a pre-existing insure somebody well with i like the mandate condition. okay so here's where i'm a little bit different i don't want people dying on the streets and i say this all the time so sir what did you mean when you said i like the mandate well what happened is we were talking over each other and it wasn't anderson's fault because i think anderson is terrific i thought he did a fan i thought it was a great evening and we got tremendous reviews on it they got tremendous ratings which is always nice too but um what i'm talking about is very simple uh, there's no mandate, no, no mandatory uh, anything. We're going to end Obamacare. We're going to terminate. It's going to be repealed. It's going to be replaced by something much better, whether it's, uh, whether it, first of all, we have to get rid of the lines between the states so there's competition, okay? We have to. And we'll go uh, health care savings accounts. We have, uh, there's, there's many different ways. We're going to get great health care. You're going to have your own doctor, which people don't have, even though Obama promised. You're going to have your own plan, and we're going to have great health care. The one thing I say is this. Call it whatever you want. People are not going to die in the middle of a street because they have absolutely no money and they're sick. They're not dying on the sidewalks and they're not dying on the streets of president. They're just not. And as a Republican, a lot of people would say, oh, that's a terrible thing to say as a Republican. Let me tell you something. Every time I mention it, you know I have the biggest crowds, far bigger than Bernie. Bernie's second, I will say, but I have far bigger than Bernie. I'll make a speech in front of 20,000 people and I'll say we cannot allow people on my watch or on any watch to die in the middle of a street or on a sidewalk 
because they have absolutely no money. We'll get him to a hospital. We'll get him to a doctor. We have to take care of him. Do you know I get standing ovations when I say that? From Republicans. Mm -hmm. And then somebody will say, he's not a conservative to say that. So you can call it whatever you want. I don't like the term mandate, personally, because that sort of uh, means mandatory. I just say this. People are not going to die on the streets of any city or of any place if I'm president. And every time I say it, I get but, standing ovations from Republicans. But just to clarify, you're, you're saying now that you would not support requiring every individual in America to have health insurance. You wouldn't support that. Yeah, that's right. And, and honestly, we were talking over each other. We okay. were, and it was my fault, not Anderson's fault, but we were talking over each other. Uh, obviously, the answer to that is exactly that. But, oh. but with that being said, we have to take care of people. We have to take care of people. Last question, sir. We heard from your wife, Melania, last night, which doesn't happen a tremendous amount. Are we going to hear more from her going forward? Well, Jake, she's a very, very uh, brilliant woman. Uh, I've, you know, I know her academic background, and I, you know, she was uh, tremendously successful before I met her. Uh, she's very smart. She also is a very private woman, and there's something very nice about that. Uh, she's a great mother. And uh, she has some uh, interesting causes that are going to be fantastic for the country. And she will. I mean, she, uh, she's, she, I really just surprised her when I said that. I said, say a few words, Milan. There's only about 40 million people watching. Say a few words. And she got up and she spoke beautifully. Uh, yeah, she'll be very much involved. She'll be very much. What she really loves doing, though, is being a mother to Barron. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Trump, thank you so much. Good luck in Nevada. We'll see you on the campaign trail. And congratulations again. Thank you very much, Jake.